Hey everybody, it's Lid Shaw with RecordingStudioRockstars.com, TheToyBoxStudio.com, and StereoSessions.com. But I'm here today for Recording Studio Rockstars because I want to give you guys a quick walkthrough on EQ. Just thought I'd do a brief introduction. I, I recently wrote a blog post explaining the difference between frequencies and EQ, and I thought on this short video, I would just dive right into the EQ that comes with Logic Pro X and just kind of show you what you do. What do you do with this EQ? You know, it can be a little bit um, disorienting or a little bit, um, you know, confusing when, the, when you first see it. So I thought I'd take you guys in and show you what's up. So I've got a Logic Pro session open. Um, I've just got the drum machine up here. I'm just gonna grab a loop from the loop library just to open it right there. Go to all drums, grab anything, drag it right in here. Let's get a little drum loop going first. All right, great. So if I go down here and click on, you see down here is my um, channel inspector. Um, I apologize. What, are they, what do we call it in Logic? Well, it's channel inspector. So if I click on my drum loop, this is going to give me a place to find all my plugins and stuff like that. Go to the channel EQ plugin, this one here, and uh, you can see you can add it right there by just doing it. In fact, I'll take it away and re-add it. So go in here, clicking in that window, look for EQ, channel EQ, stereo, bang, there you go. Now we got an EQ on that channel. So now if I play the drums, I'll show you what some of these frequencies are. Um, let me give you actually a little bit of a description first really quickly. So you see we have all these different bands for frequencies that are built into the EQ. If I hover over them, they light up, they actually show you the bands that they're gonna be affecting when you use them. Um, there is <clears throat> these, you know, they've got these regions. So that shows that when I hover over this, it's going to be affecting, well, I can't, I can't go all the way over there with my mouse without switching bands, but it's going to be affecting the area that is highlighted. And that area changes based on this lower number down here. So these three different numbers represent this one band of EQ. The first one is the frequency, which is 750 hertz is the starting frequency. This 0.0, .0 dB is the amount of gain. It's going to be the boost or cut that we do to this EQ uh, frequency band. And then this bottom one here is the Q or the quality of the frequency um, that band that we're EQing. If it's a high quality, it's going to be a very narrow uh, EQ. And you can see it's shrinking the range that it's going to be EQing. If it's a low quality, it's going to be a lower number and it's going to be a wider band of EQ. Okay, so what does all this mean? I know this is still a little confusing. Let's grab this dot. What they do is usually on a graphic EQ like this where they have a whole graph laid out. On the left-hand side, you have low frequencies and on the right-hand side, you have high frequencies. So if you go in here and grab one of these dots, this is going to be the center band for this EQ frequency. Um, so if you bring it up, it does a couple of things here. It actually boosts the EQ at that center band, which right now is 750 still, and it has increased the Q. Let me see if that increases and decreases with the boost. Okay, so the Q is staying the same. It looks narrower because it's getting steeper and steeper, uh, but the, the actual Q has stayed the same. And you see what happens is I boost this Going up, I'm going to boost the level at 740 hertz. If I bring this down, it's going to cut the level at 750 hertz. I moved it a little bit. If you move it left and right, it just changes that frequency number from 730 up to 790 there. And then again, this Q, as I click on this number and I increase the Q, it makes it narrower and narrower. If I decrease it, it makes it wider. So what is, again, what does that all, all that mean? Let's play the drum loop and let's see what kind of effect it has on it. So I'll boost the 780, 800. You can hear it starts to affect that middle. If I sweep it up and down, you really hear the effect it has on the different frequencies. You hear that? And it's also, it's pretty huge, so uh, hopefully I should warn you not to have your speakers up loud while I do this because I'm just sweeping around and, and really accentuating some of these frequencies. 
But the point is also this band, even though it starts in this middle band, I can send it way down low if I want to. I can send it way up high. Different EQs give you different limitations on this. This particular EQ that comes with Logic is going to let me go down as low as I want. And it's going to let me go as high as I want. So even though this starts here in the middle, I could turn on this EQ band and bring it up. But I could sweep it up past here. So this one is now... A higher EQ and this one is a lower EQ so that really is just a starting point where it shows up on here and uh, where you decide to actually boost or cut your EQ is going to just be wherever you decide to do it so now let's say I want to reset one of these back to zero you can come down here you can double click on that and type in zero or you can go up here and hit the option key while you click on this dot and it's going to reset it back to zero that's sort of a common uh, reset to zero feature that is built into the Macintosh and you're going to find it on a lot of different apps whether in Pro Tools or Logic um, or PreSonus. So again you can start over by just hitting the option key and clicking on it. So let's go through what these different things are. This funny shaped line here, these lines and the shapes sort of represent the curve that they're going to create in the EQ. So this lower one, if I turn this on, you notice that by default it's off and all these are on because they have colors on them. And then this one up here is off. That's because this is a low cut filter and this is a high cut filter. So if I turn this one on, what it does is it gives me the dot there and I can move this frequency um, handle point here up the EQ curve and it's saying for example, right here at the frequency of 200 hertz, as I go lower than that, it's cutting and cutting the signal level there because this graph is boosted level and cut level. So that's zero dB, which is no boost or cut. And this is thir plus 30 dB of boost or cut uh, of boost, excuse me. And then down here is minus 30 dB of, of cut. So as you're moving an EQ up or down, it's actually boosting the EQ. This is going up and boosting it at about 10 dB at this point now, or it's coming down and it's cutting it at about, you know, whatever that is, minus three. And as it goes down lower in frequencies, it's gonna cut it even more. So that's actually gonna cut off the lows of your sound. If I play this drum, you'll hear what the effect is as I move it around. Watch, off, and you hear all the lows. Turn it on and start scooting this up and you're going to hear the low end just disappear. That starts getting that filtery sound. So that's how you can do those filter effects like that. Go all the way up and you don't hear any of it anymore. Unless you've got very acute hearing if you're way up here and, there, and there's anything left in that sound. But you can hear it in there because you're actually getting all this stuff that's down under the line here um, below 10K. So that's what this is. That first one is a low cut. You might use that for cutting out the really subby stuff, the stuff that's way down low, 20 hertz, 30 hertz, things like that. This next one here, whoops, the next one here, this is called a shelf EQ. And this is a picture of an EQ that when you boost it, it starts out at normal here. And then this is the point at which you boost it and everything to the left of this. So this this point where it all hinges together, that represents the dot right here. And then everything to the left is either boosting all the way down to the lowest frequency, or as you, if you pull it down, it's cutting all the way down to the lowest frequency. So when I do this shape, it's zero, then it boosts, and it keeps going all the way to the lowest point. That would be the top of this curve here. Whereas if I cut this, it's going to be the bottom of this curve. That's what that's representing, is that shape right there. So that's, a, that's called a shelf EQ, and it's going to boost or, or cut, and it's going to leave everything continuing to boost or cut f all the way down to the lowest frequency. So what does that sound like? You notice this looks a lot like that filter, doesn't it? So at that point, they're doing very similar tasks. Let me turn off this filter, and let's boost this this time. And you hear how it really brings up the low end there, right? Now you may have to, let me show you this, this knob over here is actually a gain. This is nothing more than saying, um, and actually it's not telling me whether it's gain on the way in or out right here. I'd have to go dig in a little deeper to find out. But let's just assume that that doesn't matter at the moment, that this might be gain on the way in. You see what it does? It takes your whole curve and it actually just drops it in level. And the reason you might want to do that is if you're going to boost these low frequencies and you've already got a hot signal, 
see how we have this red over down here? This signal was already up near maximum and it's going out of the master output. And uh, because we're trying to boost it, we're actually bringing up the gain so that it's too loud for our mix bus. So this will bring this track down so that you've got a little room left to boost. And in fact, if I bring it down like this, then it's almost as if I didn't boost any low end, I just simply cut everything above there. So that's one good use for this gain fader there. Now let's keep flipping through here. I'm, I'm starting to go over time on this. Um, I'm gonna reset this guy and let's go to one of these. Oh, sorry, it's already on. I was just turning it off. So let's find this yellow anchor point and we'll boost this frequency. And I'll show you what's going on in these frequencies down here. These are, um, you know, everything below 100 is really the bass area. So that is the fundamental bass note of your note choices. Um, that's where the bass guitar lives. It's where the kick drum lives. It's where all the really heavy stuff, you know, subs, 808s, all that stuff lives down in that zone below 100 hertz. This 100 to 200 hertz region, that is uh, also bass area, but it's starting to get a little bit more up in the tonal region of the bass. Um, it's where you start to get into sort of farty sounding bass, you know, as well as bass that you really want. So it gets a little tricky. You're going to just have to sweep around there and get used to it. But just know that this is where a lot of the tonal region for your kick drum and your bass guitar lives. And when you get up to closer to 200 to 100, that area is where you're going to find a lot of the low end that's in a guitar sound too. So if you've got, you know, heavy electric guitars and you've got some distortion and some heaviness to them, that's going to live down there. Um, when you start getting up a little higher, this is called the lower mid area. So this is um, actually, you know, in my blog post, I explain how this is uh, the frequency range that we hear when we're actually first coming into this world. So for the first nine months that we're living in our mother's womb, the range that we hear is somewhere in the, you know, like 100, maybe a little bit below it or whatever. I'm sure I'm sure we could probably still hear pretty low because we can feel it, but up to about the 500 range. So this is all the range that sounds to us psychologically like it's appealing. It has warmth to it. This is, this is like an inviting tone. This is where the body of your sound is, 100 up to 500 hertz, you know, that that zone, maybe even a little lower than 500, a little more like 300, 400. That's really the body. And literally, that's what you hear coming through your mother, mother's body when you're in the womb. So it makes sense that we would be pre-programmed to find that sound appealing. Now, at the same time, that's also known as the muddy area. So the frequencies around 200 um, they tend to be an area where your your mixes, your music, can if you have too much stuff accumulating there, it can make it sound uh, muddy or just cloudy, like there's like it's not defined and doesn't have clarity and punch to it. So that's a zone you got to watch out for. Um, there's also like when you get up to the 250 range, that's where you start to have some of the body uh, of a snare drum, for example, which can, of course, go lower. You can have 100. You can really feel it down there. But like a lot of sort of old school rock and roll, you know, you're going to find snare drum action is in the 250 range. So that's a great frequency to put a little bit more volume and size into your snare drum for the close mics that is and then um, you get up into 500 and 1k and you start getting into the mid-range that is the area that we are most sensitive to so one kilohertz is the tone that uses a test tone in the studio it's the center frequency for um are what we're most sensitive to. It's the frequency that resonates at the shape of our ear canal when our, our you know, that's this frequency that comes in that we have the easiest time hearing. It's the one that is closest to the resonant frequency of the human voice. It's where you're going to find the most useful information in your music that just sort of tells you um, the definition of, of what's going on. I guess that'd be a good way to say it. You know, it is really where the voice finds most of its definition um, and most of the information that you need. Um, when you start getting up above 1K, 1 kilohertz, you get up into this range, the 2K, 3K, um, you know, 2,500 hertz here, 2.5 kilohertz 
is when we're getting into what's called the presence region. So that is upper mid-range. Um, it is the area where we're going to get clarity in sound. We're going to get, like if this was a voice, you're going to start to get clarity in the voice and be able to really differentiate the words from each other a little bit. Sibilance, detail, things like that. Stuff that just makes it sound like, you know, a hi-hat that has definition. You're going to find a lot of information up there. Um, so if you're looking for just a little bit more clarity in whatever your sound is, whether it's um, definition of the pick of a guitar, or whether you're starting to get up into where the beater attack is on a kick drum, for example, actually, you're going to find some of that information up in this high frequency. It's where the clarity in, a, in the human voice is if you're trying to bring out a vocal or bring out um, detail on a spoken word thing. Um, it's also, you know, like I said, it's going to be clarity in the symbols and things like that. But it's also where you can start to find a lot of harshness. So you have to watch out for that. If you've got too much harsh tone in a sound, you're going to want to bring it down there. When you get up here now to 7.5 kilohertz, 7,500 hertz, up to 10K and above, that's where you are in. We'll see we're in a shelf once again, shelf frequency. And this is where you have a high frequency and you can really boost high high symbols in the air and the space um, the stuff that makes it sound a little more high high fidelity and like um, it, it will it's this frequency range that might make your speaker sound like it's got clarity to it and not dull or like it has a blanket over it I'll play this drum loop and show you the difference there it's it's a excuse me it's also just where you find the treble knob on your car stereo you know that's that's up in this sound really hear this this particular sound above 2k and you it's harsh too spiky so that's really you know you can hear those high frequencies but it starts to put a, a harsh aggressive tone in it sometimes you can boost highs and then just cut them again and that can help help tame that stuff but um i just want to sort of a quick walk through of EQ. I'll come back to this for sure. I want to do a deeper dive into different instruments and show you how the EQ affects some of the tonality of the different instruments. But thank you for watching this. Um, please, if you haven't already, go over to recordingstudiorockstars.com and you can join our email list there. And I'll make sure that I'm sending you regular blog posts, emails, um, videos coming in. And also, Make sure to check out the podcast, which you'll find over on iTunes at Recording Studio Rockstars, and uh, subscribe there. and And if you dig it, leave us leave me a review in YouTube. Leave me a review on iTunes. That would be totally awesome, and it would help other people find this content. And if you have questions, hit me up in the comments below. I really appreciate your patience with this. This is like the second video I've done for this, so I intend for these to get a whole lot better, but. I want to keep them kind of short. I feel like I'm a little over here. I want to stick closer to 10 minutes and give you guys some useful stuff in a short span of time. I'm Lid Shaw. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.